Welcome to day three of the 31 day live video challenge. And today I want to talk about stop controlling your children. Because this morning I was trying to control my child. So I woke up and um, my daughter Evie was awake and it's the school holidays over here in Australia. So I said to her, look, you can't be playing all day. So we've got these little workbooks that she needs to do each day and she absolutely hates it. She despises doing her workbook and it really triggered me. It really triggered me because I love learning. I love doing homework. Yes, I'm a freak. Um, so it really triggered me because I was like, why don't you like learning? You know, I'm such a lifelong learner. I love learning new things. I love, you know, all that kind of stuff. And she doesn't like learning and it triggers me like no tomorrow. So then I got angry at her. I'm like, you have to do this. And da, 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 da. Or we're not going to go see a movie today. We went to see Sing 2, um, which was awesome, by the way, if you haven't gone and watched it. it's I, I just love children's movies. There's so many lessons to be learnt from them and somewhere along the way we've kind of lost our connection to those you know those stories about dreaming dreaming big and knowing that you know if we put the effort the faith and the belief in that we can achieve our dreams but that's another topic which I want to talk about another day but getting back to controlling um, your children so um, of course then you know she wasn't happy and I was shitty and I went back because I uh, went back to my study and um, just kept writing my journal I was you know writing my journal at that time and what came to me was that we get angry at our children and we try to control every single thing we, they do because they don't meet our expectations. And our expectations are what we wanted for ourselves or what we want of them so that we, things that we didn't achieve in our life up until this point, um, we want them to be able to achieve, right? Or things that we love doing and we know that it's good for them we want that for them as well so when that doesn't connect when what they want is different to what we want for them then there's this there's this um conflict conflict within you where you know that well one they're a child and two it's good that they know what they want because as adults as we grow up we don't a lot of times we don't even know what we want anymore there's so many times I ask my clients or people I know, if you weren't doing the career that you're doing now, which they don't like, what would you be doing? And they don't know. I ask them, what do you like to do for fun? I don't know. I'm the same. I still don't know what I like to do for fun because I'm, I have a problem, right? Where I think if I have fun, then I'm not being productive. And that's something that I am working on. So with Evie this morning, so there was this, well, I mean, it wasn't a big explosion, but I just got really like frustrated. And, you know, our children are such a mirror for each and every one of us when, for those who have children, obviously, um, <laughs> because, you know, with me and Evie, I know that she is such a mirror for me. She is very, very much like me in many, many aspects and I know she loves learning I know she likes learning but she makes it out that she doesn't because when she learns something new or when she does things that she wants to do she loves it she gets you know so much joy out of it but you know writing is a bit mundane maybe um, but I just wanted her to do something so that she's not sitting around all school holidays and just playing and watching TV and, you know, I don't know, what, whatever else, just something productive. 
And then I went back and thought, oh my gosh, this is just me and my upbringing. Knowing, just going, oh, if I'm not doing something, I'm not being productive. When children are playing and using imagina their imagination, it is productive. It is helping them harness that skill and being able to harness that skill and take that into adulthood is so important, especially now as I've been doing so much personal development and personal growth. I know all this stuff and yet I still have those instances where these things happen. You know, we, my husband and I, we both very much into um, watching what we say and we've told Evie that, you know, don't say I can't because it's not that you can't, it's because you don't want to. Take responsibility. It's not that you can't, it's that it's not a priority. It's not that you can't, you just haven't learnt it yet. When you say, I can't, you're just relinquishing responsibility because, you know, you just like, well, I can't do it, so I'm not doing it. When re in reality, if you take responsibility and say why you can't do that thing, it gives you a sense of responsibility going, actually, I chose not to do it. Whereas before you're just saying, well, I don't want to, you know, it, you're saying it in a way where, it, where you're relinquishing responsibility. So as you can see, <laughs> these live videos are totally, I have no plans for these. It's just a topic that comes into my head during the day that um, feels right. And then I just talk. So I'm jumping all over the place, but whatever. <laughs> so next time you want to control your child, have a think about the reason why. Or even after you start, you know, you tell them off and do whatever you do, go back, go back to, go back and have a think why you had that um, trigger you, why you had to tell your child off, what wasn't necessary, okay? Just because they didn't listen to you, did you have to have a whole blow up and, you know, go nuts at them or whatever it is that you do? And there's no judgment there, you know, we all go through it no matter how enlightened you are you're human just remember you're human and humans have emotions and this is just how it is but when you're aware of the reasons why you have all these things trigger you then you can start working on them and healing those parts of you which are causing that trigger because chances are there's been something that's happened in your life that's caused some trauma. There's been, you know, parent issues. Um, you know, you, you've had some, hurt, you know, you've had something happen when you were a child which causes those triggers. You know, your mum and, you know, for, say for myself, whenever I am not doing something, I get so anxious. You know, the last few weeks with the Christmas holidays, and the kids being at home, no childcare, no school, it's very triggering in that, okay, I need to do stuff and I'm not, I'm spending time with them, which is great. But then I'm like, I'm like so on edge because I'm like, I'm not doing anything, but what is doing something, right? What, what is doing something and what is priority and what, what is the thing that you're doing actually going to take you to where you want to go or is it just that you needed to do something because I find that I do a lot of busy work that doesn't really need to be done at any specific time it just needs to be done sometime right or it really doesn't matter but because I've been brought up to go if you're not doing something you're lazy you're you know whatever whatever so it's something still a part of me that needs to heal even though I'm totally aware of it I still fall into that trap and then it's like okay right let's let's keep healing that part of us and let's keep bringing it back and going why 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 and then do the healing remove those blocks change your mindset shift your energy cut those ties whatever you need to do right but first of all is whenever you blow up at your child or you get frustrated or whatever it is, ask yourself why. Because it is to do with you. It has nothing to do with your child. And the fact that you're controlling them, you are setting them up 
to do the same thing in the future, to be controlling, to feel like they're not worthy, right? Oh, I want to do this, but my parents want me to do that. And that is the problem when we make our child feel unworthy. Like what they decide on, what they think isn't good enough. I always give Evie a choice. Even though, you know, <laughs> there's a choice that I want her to make. But I give her the choice. Is The choice is you do it. You can do this, this. Or if you don't do either, this is the consequence. It's still a choice. She knows exactly what will happen if she chooses which um, thing that, you know, I've, which um, option I've given her. Because at the end of the day, she still makes that choice. And that's important. And one of the other things for me that I always do is um, after we have an argument, because Evie and I are so similar, we just get angry at each other. We always say sorry. And we always ask each other for forgiveness. And we always tell each other why we got angry. Because sometimes when you're angry, you, at that point in time, you probably don't even explain yourselves as to why you're just angry. You're just like angry and then you just go off. But it's a rule for me that we always ask each other for forgiveness. Because forgiveness is such a big part. And I already know <laughs> that no matter what I do as a parent, I have screwed up my children in some way. And my children will need some healing in the future in some way. Just depends on how much I've screwed them up. So I'm trying my best to not screw them up as much. Not screw them up. But, you know, we all have been all grown up and have baggages from our upbringing. But I'm trying to reduce that amount of baggage that she needs to work through when she gets older. And forgiveness is such a massive practice for self-love, healing, so for me, that's a very important thing. And so many times I see people around me um, so unaware of why they want to control their children and, and how they are controlling the children, and what effects it can have on them. Um, because it's just not something that crosses our mind. We weren't brought up that way. And if you haven't gone into that um, journey of discovery or into reading about these things or, you know, even parenting books, um, which I have to be honest, I have not really read any, but um, I do things my way and what feels good for me. But it's just that awareness of the reason you're controlling your children is everything has to do with you and nothing to do with your child. We are here to guide them so that they become a functional human being, a functional grown-up. We're not here to tell them what to do. We can only offer them guidance. This, Their life is theirs. You are here as a guide. And whether you're a good guide or a bad guide, you know, this is the life that they're destined for. But what you can do is be the most supportive parents that you can be and guide them in the right direction for them to be a good person to help you know serve humanity and not be selfish and being kind and being loving all those beautiful high vibrational actions and emotions you know really instill into them and let them embody those those um traits right that's that's our job as parents but when we're being controlling, it's out of fear, fear that they won't turn out how we want them to turn out. That's the take home message. So that's my day three done. And I hope it um, is a reminder or, you know, it brings you some inspiration of how um, your relationship is with your children. Um, as I said, no judgment. I'm... I still go off at my children, guilty as charged, um, but there is self-awareness and I totally understand why I do it um, and I'm working on it. The main thing is you work on it and when you heal yourself, you're healing 
everyone around you. So with that, have a beautiful day. I love you. I believe in you. And I will see you tomorrow.